morning everyone first of all first of all thank you so much for inviting me for a webinar by dr wajid uh, is really taking lots of efforts to you know just to have a good spread of the education during the lockdown period so my topic for today what we have decided is on the insights of digital implantology <clears throat> which is the future now myself dr kenal shah i'm a consultant implantologist i'm a kol for dentier implants speaking for them since last almost 3 years now i'm india's first and the only medit master uh, where we have been trained in the headquarters of hq of the medit about this how to use this scanner how to take the impressions by the scanners and different uses of scanners i am a director for smile and answer dental clinic which is having three branches in mumbai and we are having a team of four doctors like me me who is practicing totally on implants more on implants my wife who is doing a general practice my sister in law who is a periodontist dr priya thakkar and her husband dr hardik gora who is a oral and maxillofacial surgeon so basically the team work always the team work always wins and that's the situation for me as well i'm also a director for seattle study club which is a veda study club known as vedas veda study club in mumbai uh, it's a beautiful uh, study club where we have a great international speakers speaking on the sometimes on the webinars sometimes their live videos sometimes their uh, videos which are recorded previously in their conferences in seattle and it has been provided here by dr uh, sharath shetty who is the main director of the head of the india in uh, seattle study club you can say that so let's not waste our time and let's uh, move ahead with the first webinar from my end on this lockdown period that's on insights of digital implantology so let's look at the first introductory video why we want to be digital the world is going digital so all the instruments what are used here in the music are the digital instruments and look at the effects and look at the sound what we have with some editing of our own was just the introductory video where you guys uh, just to say good morning everyone again and let's begin with a very smart sentence given by charles jewel in 1899 who is the commissioner of us patent office what is said in 1899 everything that can be invented has been invented isn't it a great statement in 1899 itself that saying now we don't need to invent anything and future everybody knows what all things was invented i'll also come through more smart sentences at the end of my presentation where you will be shocked to see a great people a great uh, motivators or entrepreneurs as uh, even these sentences which are shocking to the world itself so why are we here today how many of you are using nokia 3310 or any mobile phone which is having a keypad none of you right 99.9% of the people on the earth right now have stopped using this kind of phones and everybody has moved into a digital way to fit the touch screen mobile phones and every latest equipment or gadgets in their home so what we are going to learn today what complete digital workflow means we'll be looking at how you will be shocked to again shocked to uh, see that uh, you know you are already somewhere digital but you have not completely digital 
what are the digitalization devices used in day-to-day -day dentistry digital guide for implants my focus will be more on the implants so i'll be speaking more on the guided surgeries today so digital guide how do we make it and how accurate how good they are then next will be a digital impressions scanners use of the scanners and how to use the scanners CAD solutions and as well as cam solutions what is complete digital workflow it's a workflow in which every phase of diagnosis planning and treatment is going to be conducted by a digital resource so what are the di digital resources see now if you see the diagram or a picture which is there on the bottom you can see most of the things you are using in the clinic only few of the things you are not using like digital cameras you are using for the regular photography of your patients if not dslr at least you are doing with the mobile photography right then there is a scanner uh, sorry, CVCTs. CVCTs you are taking for the implant almost in all of the cases. Then making a guide, a guided surgery where you have a, you might not be doing a, all the cases with the guided, but at least you'll be, you might be doing few cases like uh, full mouth or something with the guided surgery to ease out your work. Then a scanner and a CAD and a CAM. So apart from these things, I feel guided and the scanning part. Two things are the only one which we are not doing on a regular basis. So I will teach you how you are going to do it. So it will be very easy for you guys to conduct uh, easy, uh, you know, easy flow of the work. So these are digitalization devices. Again, coming to a CAD and a CAM. CAD softwares are like uh, CBCT machine, intraoral scanners. Then we have a DSLRs. We have a, a, a photography tools and everything that is your CAD that, that is for the designing. And when we are talking about the CAM. We have a milling machines. Almost every city has more than 10 milling machines these days. So we look forward to do all the work in the milling, which has a more precise and accurate, which softwares are also easily available like ExoCAD, TreeShape, and many other softwares are there. So how much digital our clinic is? If you look at there, we have a 2D photographs. We have an OPG machine. More, many clinics have OPG machine. Uh, Designing softwares like DTS, just go through that website one, Digital Treatment Simulation Software, where you can just click few photographs, tell the patient to sit outside the clinic, and you can just make the smile designing for them, and you can tell them, you can call them in again, and you can show them how beautiful they can look after the digital treatment simulation. And about the intraoral scanners, yes, little expensive device, but the future of the dentistry where we are going to have lot and lot scanners available in our own clinics more on uh, in indian economics if you see most of the lab people have started providing us so that is also again a benefit for us and websites the most common digital platform what we have created for our patients is the website where we are where we are easily easily having the access to to our patients, we can show them video, we can upload the photographs and everything. So moving forward, the next video, why we want to be digital, why we want to be fast, because with digitalization will be fast. So let's see a video where 1950 Indianapolis in the pit one, Time how they have. Time to refuel and change tires. Newmore himself changes the tires. Only four crew members, including the driver, are allowed to work in the car. It's a tense time. Holland stays in his seat, anxious to get away. Let's watch. See how much time they are taking. So it will take almost 67 seconds just to finish up this pit work so that the driver can again go and join the race. So the tires are changed at last. A crewman polishes the windshield as Holland moves away just 67 seconds after he stops. Right. So now let's see what happens in 2013 Melbourne race. So, 
how fast we are just a blink of eye and the car was ready to go and for the race now tell me how many of us want such situation in their clinic nobody right a tooth implant touching a uh, adjacent tooth or implant placed too buckly and the uh, gray gray part of the implant or the abutment is popping out from the gums and if the patient is having a gummy smile then it's a disaster for yourself so most difficult prosthesis most of the prosthetists say yes it is fp1 prosthesis where the condition is like this but we want result something like this where we can have the identical twins sitting on the anterior part of the tooth with a nice form gingiva everywhere this result can be achieved or something like this where we have a single missing tooth and we want to achieve a result something like this this results can be achieved with the use of guided surgery in implants and with the use of digitalization where we have a cbct intraoral scanner digital guide implants scan abutments uh, titanium blanks what we require and the uh, the milling machines will be required for the crown builder so this is a simple digital transformation whenever you see a pain with simple digital transformation what we need is we need a simple kit or a surgical kit guided surgical kit we do the surgery then we move on to the scan abutment during the prosthesis we scan instead of taking the impression and then we give the lab for the milling and then again uh, giving a crown to the patient so simple three steps we'll be discussing everything in these three steps about the about the uh, digitalization so let's see how we are going for the step 1 that is a uh, guided surgery why we need guided surgery because hal erol says don't just do it first plan it and then do it why we need to plan it now let me give you a beautiful example of the failure of civil engineering now can you say this bridge can be completed at any cost no it can't be it's a disaster it's a failure of civil engineering it's a worst example where civil engineering fail same way if our surgical plan and restorative plan doesn't meet each other then what will happen yes due to inadequate guidance our prosthesis or our surgical failure will be there so why we need guide a guide is used to avoid a mistakes and deviations in implementing a plan any plan which we want to implement guide is going to avoid some mistakes and deviations guide is not going to be uh, you know it, it is not going to be something that is a magic that everything will be okay but no you should know the basics along with the basics you will be able to avoid small mistakes small deviation in implementing a plan and your success rate and accuracy will be at the top so those who have not used the guided surgery much or those who are a new in implantology field let me give you some advantages of the guided surgery the most important advantage and the most safest thing what we want to avoid critical anatomical structures like neurovascular bundle inferior nerve maxillary sinus or is there any uh, depression or anything we need to avoid so that a uh, guide can help you out it is a ultimative restorative or a surgical control so the surgical guide is not always the for the guide for the surgeries it is actually a restorative or a prosthetic guide why because we can well plan the case beforehand before printing a guide you know the position of your crown where exactly the crown is going to come so it is actually the restorative guide rather than a surgical control parallelism yes when and wherever required you can have the good parallelism with the guide and it is faster not in the initial phase of your guided surgery but yes as as uh, slowly and progressively you use the guided surgery protocol you follow the protocol you will become the faster in time but there are disadvantages the first foremost disadvantage everybody looking over here is the cost what i have written in the bracket is the historical why it's a historical because when we used to make a guide in 2010 11 i still remember we used to get the guide at around 30000 35000 rupees per implant or say uh, around four or five implants in that from the noble biocare itself but now you have a many guided surgery 
many guided guide uh, manufacturing companies available many people are printing the guides for you so now the cost has come down to few thousands rather than much more which was a higher coming to uh, complexity yes it is still a bit complex but things have been sorted out with the use of lots of advanced digital machines like cbct impressions intraoral scans or labs the things have become easy now so complex yes it is also again little bit of historical i can say yes that's the only disadvantage what i see limited mouth opening like if you have made the guide without seeing the mouth opening and on the day of the surgery if you feel that the guide is not opening a uh, guide is not uh, you know we are not able to put the drill inside the guided sleeves then it's a waste of your money as well as time of your patient irrigation to osteotomy yes again osteotomy whenever we are doing the osteotomy irrigation should be sufficient in fact more than sufficient should be there but this studies have proven that irrigation to osteotomy with the guide is less but it is not that damaging to the bone so three important things which a guided surgery helps me to provide my patient one is the safety one is the precision and third is the predictability for the predictability if you see the last uh, cbcd scan if i was one 1.5 mm here and there i would have perforated the buccal plate of buccal plate so that's how predictable it is so now what is precision what do you think what is precision let me give you an example of this So, was he precise? Was he accurate? So, what is precision? When you hit the darts on the dart board at the same place, at the same angle, but not at the bullseye, that is precision. You are precise, but you are not accurate. Now, what is accurate? When you hit the bullseye, but not at the same place, with some deviation in your darts, that is accurate. But what guide can give us is precision as well as accuracy. Both the things we can achieve with the guided surgery in IMRA. What are the different guides and what are its accuracy? Just have a look. So there are three kinds of guides. One is the mucosa supported. That is when you are treating a fully edentulous patient. We have a muc we have to take the support everything from the mucosa with some anchoring pins. That is a mucosa supported. What is bone supported? When we have to take the support from the bone itself. And last, it's the tooth supported where we have a few missing tooth and we are taking most of the support from the tooth itself. So if you see the deviations, the variation in the angular deviation right from this left is 2.29 degrees to the mean deviation in tooth supported is 2.26 degrees. So it says that the accuracy increases with the from left to right that is a tooth supported if you get a chance to make a guide for tooth supported guide yes it will be best and it will be the most accurate guide then we for then we take the guide design and we make the guide sometimes we have to reflect the flap sometimes we don't we'll see how the guide and how the steps are there so don't worry about this just the introduction to the guide before that, we'll go ahead with the 10 myths of guided surgery. Whenever we are doing a guided surgery, we have some questions in my mind, in our mind. This, the first is guided surgery is an easier way to place a dental implant. So let me tell you, it's not the easier way to place the implant. We need high level of experience, training and skill is required. Surgeons should be experienced because we need to do a lot of steps in guided surgery. We have to do a pre-assessment of the patient we have to do a lot of uh, training before doing a surgery uh, more money and time need to be invested for the guided surgeries now let's see what is second myth that is a guided surgery decreases the clinical time efficiency chair time efficiency can increase significantly guided surgery does not reduce the treatment time Re remember just reduce the time during the surgical placement not the overall treatment plan because impressions wax up cbct virtual planning is everything what it takes a lot of time so let's see how if you have a edentulous patient we have to make the denture first and that takes some time then we have to put the uh, some opaque markers in that 
then we have to scan the patient with the denture and we have to scan the denture itself uh, uh, differently. Now these two scans will be merged on the software. Once they are merged, their meeting points, the points which were the opaque markers were there, they will be merged together and then we will start planning of the case, how the placement of each and every implants will be required for all the placements. All the four implants are been decided, what placements will be, what will be their angulations. Post that, we have a guide design. Once you have done with the uh, planning of the, approve the planning of your implant positions, then the guide design will pop up on the software that this, this is advice guide design. Once that is done and again approved from your end, we'll be printing the guide. So the sleeves which are there, will be putting the sleeves on the later stage. Like once we print the guide, then we have a space, we have a hole there and there we can put the sleeves for the guided surgery. Now this sleeves, about the sleeves, you can also have a without sleeves, you can have with sleeve or you can have an open uh, guide kit or open, open sleeve as well. So we come to that part also. So once that is done, you can see the placement as we plan exactly same way we can have our placement. We can go flapless placement and we can place the healing abutment or if the torque is achieved nicely or you can have this multi-unit abutment placed on that top. So this beautifully we can finish up the surgery and remember this patient of mine who had a very very little bone she was very happy with the surgery saying that there was hardly any pain swelling trauma anything to me and she was really appreciating the work with the guided surgery as we have informed her about the guided surgery before itself now coming to third mind that guided surgery is indicated primarily for the more challenging cases no in fact we must start with the simple cases do you really uh, drive an automatic car on the day one? No, we learn to drive a car which is having gears first and then slowly we'll move from first gear to second gear to third gear to fourth gear. We can't go directly to fourth gear or we can't drive directly automatic car, right? Moving to that myth of the guided surgery. Number four, the guided surgery techniques are similar to conventional surgery techniques. Surgical technique is little different because the instruments are different. Company oriented guides are also available like Dentium has its own guide, Ostem has its own guide, Noble Biocare has its own guide. So we have to inform them that we need such a guide and we have to inform the guide manufacturing company or guide manufacturing person as well that we are going to use so and so kit so they give you accordingly. Otherwise we have the universal guide system also available where you can ask the guide person only that please provide me with the guided kit or system what you have which will be universal uh, but only remember whenever you are using a universal guide always try to place the last drill of your surgical kit itself otherwise some variation might create a problem during the implant placement if the implant is really active in nature an implant surgeon must be comfortable with the conventional technique why this statement because what happens if the guide doesn't fit properly or the mouth opening is challenged or you are not comfortable while doing that day so we need to know that something if something or other thing goes wrong on that day you should be comfortable doing the conventional technique as well now these are the two simple and the full kit given by the dentium people for the guided surgery so drills remain the same only thing is uh, this is a small kit simple one and the full kit has lot of uh, kits and the drills but four important drills what we need for the guided surgery is one is the flat drill, tissue punch and then the guided surgical drills. So this tissue punch when you want to go ahead with the flapless placement you need to use that flat drill. If you have any discrepancy in the bone architecture you can just do the flattening of your drill at the beginning only so that you don't uh, slip your drill while placing the while drilling the while doing the osteotomy. Moving forward to the myth of the guided surgery number five, I am smarter than the guided surgery workflow so I can skip the steps. No, shortcuts or errors made in the guided surgery are both additive as well as cumulative. So if you are following a guided surgery, be aware that you are not supposed to miss a single step whatever given or guided by the manufacturer of the kit. You are not supposed to skip any steps. Moving forward, Number six, 
that is in guided surgery cbct scans are of equal accuracy and quality to medical ct scans i have been attending lots of uh, seminars with the ent surgeons on sometimes on the sinus lift part sometimes uh, removal of the mucosal cyst or the tumor from the sinus uh, uh, sorry maxillary sinus cavity this, this is always a debatable topic that the cbct are of the equal importance compared to the medical ct scans so that's uh, fine we are having a good cbct machines and we are having good results with that so stick to that coming to insertion torque measurements are accurate when using a guided surgery uh, yes but you have to remove the guide because what is torque basically it's a resistance from the bone which is recorded on the torque machine so it always experiences a less tactile sense of bone density when the guide is in place so it if you want the accurate the most accurate numbers then you have to remove the guide from the patient mouth and then check the torque then you will not have uh, any errors myth number 8 that's what we discussed during the disadvantages that is irrigation to osteotomy bone overheating is of more concern in guided surgery because see now you are completely if you are doing a guided surgery that is a tooth supported guide so you have placed the guide so from everywhere you have blocked the osteotomy side right with the sleeve the most accurate uh, sleeve then the guide kit the drills which go, which are going to go from there will have a accurate fitting a precise fitting because it is not a Uh, you know the loosening of the sleeve or loosening of the drill will not be acceptable so there is no space for fluid to go in so what you will do so in those cases we have to use internal irrigation drill as well that the irrigation will directly come right from the bottom of the surgery so that easily you can have easily you can have uh, the irrigation part going on but the study what study says the bone overheating is contraindicated in all cases of implant surgery while using a guided surgery osteotomy preparation generate higher temperature but it does not did not reach the temperature levels that were dangerous to the bone dangerous to the bone so we don't have to worry much about but try to give chill saline during irrigation try to have internal irrigation drill that's my concern i have personally seen a failures in a uh, guided surgery with a single implant as well where the irrigation was
sorry sorry yeah okay. so so we did the scanning of the model once the scan of the model cbct uh, we pick the scan same center you can do or if you have the intraoral scanner you can scan the patients in patient intraorally and you can directly send the model to the uh, send the data to the uh, guide manufacturing whomsoever is doing for you once that uh, two steps is done next is we have to merge this scan now you see the, the cbct the white one is the cbct of the patient and the orange one is the scan of your uh, scan of the impressions so these two data is merged now when we had the edentulous patient we did with the opaque markers but here we have the tooth which are present <laughs> yeah, no problem. That's okay. Yeah, can you see that uh, merger of both? Not yet. <laughs> 